Today we're going to look at how to find APKs as samples for reverse engineering, both applications that you would install on your device intentionally as well as malware. Beginning with malware, there are a number of different resources for finding samples specifically for Android. There are some sites that require you to prove that you're actually a working malware researcher in order to gain what's called a researcher account. However, certain sites like Virus Bay require an invite but don't necessarily require you to be a full-time professional malware analyst. Similar to Virus Bay, Virus Share is another resource that also requires an account and requires you to email the admins for access, but they also list tons of different malware samples. And then finally, Hybrid Analysis in the same stream also requires an account, but they actually seem to have a faster approval process. And as you can see, you can do a pretty specific advanced search for whatever kind of malware you're looking for. We are looking for Android, and there you can see a whole bunch of different APKs with some information about the malware that's already been analyzed, as well as how to download the sample. And then finally, if you really don't want to sign up for one of those websites, there are a lot of GitHub accounts that just kind of dump malware samples into the repository. Next, we're going to look at how to get legitimate apps that you could find on the Google Play Store onto your computer. APK Pure is a good resource, and it will show you all of the free apps that exist on Google Play and allow you to download them to your computer for you to analyze them or install them into an emulator. You can also use applications that exist on your device as a sample for reverse engineering. In order to do that, you're going to need something called ADB or Android Debug Bridge, and this exists as part of the Android SDK. But you don't need to download the entire SDK or Android Studio in order to get it. You can actually just download the tools directly and, uh, and kind of avoid any of the additional bloat from that other software if you don't think you're going to actually be using it. So we downloaded the SDK tools, the Linux version, and we're just going to unzip that directory into a new directory called SDK just to kind of keep everything in one place on my desktop. So after unzipping our SDK tools download, we'll see another directory called tools in the SDK directory we created. And within there lives all of the tools that came with the Android SDK. And we're going to be using the SDK manager to install ADB from an additional package called platform-tools. Because we're doing things so manually, we're going to need to create a dummy configuration file for the repositories we're trying to download from. So we're just going to create an empty file called repositories.cfg, and then from there we can use the SDK manager to grab the platform-tools package and install it for us. Now you can call ADB just from that directory, or you can add it to your path, whichever you prefer. In addition to ADB, in order to get these applications off your device, we're going to need to put the phone into developer mode. So you're going to go into settings, and then you're going to navigate to system and within system to about phone. Now if you scroll down to the build number, you're going to select that about seven times and that's going to, for some reason, bring your phone into developer mode. Now you're gonna see developer options and if you click into that menu, you're going to enable USB debugging and that is going to allow us to use the Android debug bridge to download those applications to our computers. Hopping back over to our computer into terminal, we're going to call ADB devices to see that we have our Pixel phone displayed as being connected to our computer. 
Next, what we're going to do is actually list all of the packages that are currently installed in our device, and that's going to allow us to see the package name of the application we want to grab. We're going to be downloading an application called Bake GPS, which just lets you mock locations. There is the GSmart Studio Fake GPS, and now we're going to download that package. So first we're finding where the package actually lives within the phone or with the device. And now we're going to pull from that location to our desktop. Now we can see that the APK file is downloaded to our desktop and just double checking if we call file on it we can see that it is in fact the APK file. So just a couple of comments about legality issues. Um, there are some restrictions about what you can do with applications that are not your own. So if you're at all concerned that the research you might be doing is maybe, you know, kind of potentially crossing the line into black hat territory, I would take a look at this fantastic resource from EFF. Um, they have basically everything you could need to know about the legal issues surrounding reverse engineering and, uh, and what to kind of avoid to ensure that you're just erring on the side of caution with the research that you're doing.